Hi guys, welcome to Luxa YouTube channel. My name is Ram Mishra and I'm your online instructor. So what's in this video? In this video, we will talk about Kubernetes cluster IP service. So guys, let's begin the topic. But before we start the lab session, we need to understand few points, which is what is Kubernetes service, their types and use case of cluster IP service. So let's about the service first. Just what is service? So as per the documentation, uh, Kubernetes service is a mechanism to expose application both internally and externally. We know very well Kubernetes is a powerful tool for container orchestration, enabling the easy management and the deployment of the container applications. One of its key feature is service abstractions, which allow users to expose their application as network services within the cluster. So if you scroll down and look for, give me one second, let me check it where it is. Uh, here it is service type. Yeah. This is the service type. So if we talk about the service type, so uh, community service, uh, here we have uh, basically three kind of services, cluster IP, node port and load balancer, right? This is the load balancer. So in this video or in this demo, we will talk about the cluster IP service. Cluster IP is the default service type in Kubernetes and it's provide internal connectivity between different components of our application. Kubernetes assign virtual IP address to a cluster IP service that can be accessed from within the cluster during its creation. This IP address is stable and does not change even if we, if the pod behind the service are rescheduled and replaced. So if we talk about the use case of cluster IP service that are excellent choice for internal communication between the different components of our application and they don't, the then don't uh, need to be exported to the outside world. For example, if we have a microservices that pro process data and send this to the other microservices for further processing, we can use cluster IP service to connect them. So this is all about the cluster IP theoretical part. More information you can gather from this official documentation. In this demo, we will see how we can work with cluster IP service in Kubernetes cluster, right? So let's begin the lab session. I'll move to the lab part. And uh, uh, currently you can see I'm on, on single Linux machine where I have already installed Minikube cluster. So let's check the service, let's check the status first. Red release and Minikube status. Yeah, it's running and configured. So before moving to the next, verify the status of cluster first. To check the node availability in the cluster, run the following command, kubectl get nodes. So here you can see my minikube node is ready condition once you have a node available in cluster you are ready to create your pod so now we will check the list of the pod in the default namespace using the kubectl get pods command no resource found in the default namespace okay because since this is uh, this is, this is will be a first pod on the cluster you will not see any pod in the default namespace similarly we will check the service availability first right so the command is kubectl get service or you can go with short svc services so here you can see one default cluster ip service is running in the default namespace for kubernetes cluster on port number 443 so let's move to the first tab which is launch our first pod in kubernetes cluster right so okay let me go back on my dedicated folder here it is and here we need to create a file so the code could be based on json or yaml format and port creation code is available on kubernetes documentation so you can get it from there so let me copy the code from my notepad and paste it here so i'll open my notepad and this is the code for my first pod.yaml so i'll just follow vim first pod.yaml let me paste it now i will explain so basically in this example, I'm going to launch one pod having the label team IT. Here you can see on line number six, I have mentioned the team IT label, right? With the Nginx container. So here team is a key and IT is a value. Let's create a pod and that has initially one label team Linux. So let me deploy and then we will check the with labels. So kubectl, kubectl apply hyphen F and first part dot eml perfect now uh, it's created successfully let's check the port level so we can go with the command kubectl get ports hyphen hyphen show labels show okay sorry type order show labels yeah 
first port one by one running team Linux. So the get sub command can be used to display the ports label. Here you can see label are showing as an additional column in the output. So here we have successfully run one port, first port with the team IT label, right? Now move to the next part, which is launch cluster IP service file. So the default service type assign an IP address from a pool of IP address that your cluster has reserved for that purpose. So let's launch cluster IP service main file. So I'll make service.yml and if you talk about the code going back click on the cluster IP scroll down and here's the code right so you can just copy this code from uh, or on and modify it according to your need so I have already copied and let me copy from my notepad and then run it so <coughs> sorry let me copy this from my notepad and I'll make it here So, uh, if we talk about this file, this YAML file defines a Kubernetes service object. Let me explain the important field in this file. First of all, we will start line number two, kind, right? This specifies the type of Kubernetes object that is being defined. So here we are defining a service rather than port. This is the reason we have mentioned service here. Then in the metadata name, uh, name specify the uh, specify the name of the service. So in this case, uh, my service name is backend. It could be anything. Then I have defined type. What type of service it is? It's a cluster IP or node port or load balancer. So I am going with the cluster IP. Then I have mentioned selector. Selector specify a label selector that defines which pod should be exposed by this service. In this example, the service will export all ports that have labeled team with the value IT. It's a way of telling Kubernetes this service should sit in front of this collection of ports. So all incoming traffic to this service should be redirect to one of these ports, right? So here I have mentioned team IT. And then the last, I have mentioned port. The name is HTTP and port is specify the network port that the service should expose. So in this example, the service expose port is 8080 which is the port used by the client to access this service and forward the traffic to the ports port 80 which is where the backend application is running on right so this is the important uh, you can say terms about is this file let me save and quit and let me deploy it so the same command kubectl apply hyphen f and go with service file perfect so uh, service created let's view by the following command one more time kubectl get svc okay so here you can see new service name backend is ready with new cluster ip that is 10.99.239.229 and that this the type is cluster ip and running on port number 8080 even we can get detailed information about this service using describe command so we will go with one more time kubectl get describe c r i b e describe and uh, what services service name is b a c k e n d backend kubectl get one second the small type order kubectl describe not get sorry d e s c r i b e describe s v c c k e n d backend okay i'm getting warning failed to update endpoint slice okay let me remove let me launch one more time delete okay kubectl get svc okay let me try launch one more time and go with the get svc okay cluster ip is change 10.105.172.192 and now check the describe services perfect so here you can see <coughs> the description so uh, selector type is team IT and the type is cluster. The target port is 80 and export port is 8080 and the cluster IP is 10.105, 1, 0, 1, 0, 172 and 192. And if you talk about the end point here, you can see 10.24407 colon 80. This is the IP address of my Nginx container, which is currently pointed out by the service file, right? So now time to check. So how we will check? We will uh, let's move into the minikube cluster and hit on this cluster IP not on the pod IP, right? We will get the response from the Nginx container. So let me open minikube uh, Go with the minikube SSH 
run the curl ip is 10 let it be copy the cluster ip you can copy from here also and hit on port number 8080 so 8080 sorry it's not 800 8080 yep here we can see that welcome to nginx it's working so uh, this is how it's working on my cluster ip right even if we create another pod having same label and the port my cluster ip will target and get back response from the second port also so let me create another pod right let me check it vim got second pod dot yaml let me create one more yaml file and this is my second pod so i just copy the code one more time from this file and paste it here save it so <clears throat> basically in this example in this file i'm going to launch another pod having the same label c label is same team it and uh, apache engineer the image is apache http right so let's deploy and check so go back apply f second dot pod yaml okay let me go back kubectl get pods hyphen o uh, pod o hyphen sorry get pods yeah it's in it's in creating condition hyphen hyphen show labels Let it be complete. Yeah, it's running. You can see that it's in running condition one by one. Okay, so now let me describe one more time services. So if I go back on describe, describe a CV my backend, here you can see two endpoints are there, right? So these two endpoints represent my two containers. One is Nginx and another one is my uh, Apache. So let's hit cluster IP one more time and we will get the res response from both pod one by one. So if I'm going back here, so if I hit 192, now you can see earlier I'm getting the response from Apache container. Now I'm getting from the, uh, earlier I'm getting the response from Nginx. Now I'm getting the response from Apache. Even if I try one more time, see, I'm getting the response from Nginx. So uh we uh, here you can see we hit on cluster ip on export port not on the pod ip and we will get the result from both port one by one so this ip address is stable and doesn't change even if the pod behind the service are rescheduled or replaced so this will be the same until unless we will not remove the service file right so guys that's all about the cluster ip and its documentation and hopefully you enjoyed and learn new things soon i will come up with another new interesting topic till then keep practicing if you feel something i have missed or you wanted to know more something is please reach out through my social media links which is mentioned in the description and if you like this video please do not forget to like share and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon button for the latest update thanks for watching stay safe and goodbye